Mama Helen and Jill. Mama Helen and Jill. Mama Helen and Jill. Mama Helen and Jill. Oh my God, it is still Mama Helen today, all the way from Wari, Nigeria. Oh. I'm very excited about this topic, and I'll tell you what later. Why? Because the topic is all about why are godly men so spiritual when it comes to romance in marriages. Why are they so spiritual? Okay, and marriage is supposed to be very enjoyed by all. Should it then be because we're spiritually minded, we should have, we should cost, make it, you know use it to affect uh, interpersonal relationships amongst marriages or husband and wife. Those are the things that we want to look at on Mama Helen and you. How to make it wonderful? You're spiritual, but yet you see enjoy your home. Back in a moment, Ooh. it is still Mama Helen and you. Mama Helen and you. Mama Helen and you. My understanding of romance in marriage, what I see, romance is very good. Being you a pastor or you know, a non-Christian, romance is very, very important in marriage. And you see, these days, girls are everywhere. If you don't give out your give your husband what he really needs, the man will go. That is why you see men cheating on their wives, because their wife is starving them. Understand? To me, romance is very important. Not just lay kissing. Or gain, but you have to go with intimate. That is why God brought Adam and Eve together. Because you know the man cannot live alone. That's why he brought a woman to the Garden of Eden to be with him there. Thank you very much. Being close to God means that you will be able to find out, first of all, from the author of marriage, which is God himself, who authored marriage. In the Bible, we're told that God, you know, took the first woman from man and gave him um, gave him as a wife and that was the beginning of marriage you know see today any marriage that will stand the test of time has to go back to the manual the manual of marriage is the bible there is time for everything there's times you go to church there's time you come home when you get home you can do your romantic affair when you get home apart from that there are other different type of Romance, I think that it can affect the man, not in the church aspect. Once in marriage means uh, as in caring for your partner. That's what okay, do you think being too close to God most times affects romance in marriage? Yes. Why? Because maybe as in, for instance, now you're into a program. Uh, maybe the thing can stop uh, that thing. If I enter a program, as if you have program in church, and your partner needs uh, your care, and you cannot be able to uh, care for the person, so th that thing can uh, bring a uh, disturb to to marriage. Uh, romance is like a tonic in marriage. It's like the oil that lubricates your marriage. So the closer you come, the more you touch yourself, the more you feel yourselves. The clues are your car. Well, welcome back. It is Stop Mama Helen and you all the way from Wari, Nigeria today. And then, of course, on Mama Helen and you, we're looking at where are godly men so spiritual when it comes to romance in marriages. Mm. With me to do justice to that today, there's no other person today, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. My horn, Bridget Afia, Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Afia is the ED Afia Brick Consult, ED, uh, ED JD4 foundation as well it's such a pleasure having you on this program today thank you very much Matt. Mm -hmm. i mean i i love having bridget because i mean she is also extremely down to her as well and i know it's really going to be very very enjoying having her on set with me 
Now, what does it mean to be married? To be married, in my own perception, is to decide to, become, to form a union with another person. Yes. To say, I give you my all, you give me your all, we become one. Like they say, in mathematics and marriage, it's one plus one is equals to, to one. one. <laughs> <laughs> well, so wh what's your take on this um, Adam and Steve kind of marriage? we're not having around, around the world. What's your take on it? Would you also still consider that as marriage? It's, and it's, bring, it's causing a lot of problems for marriages because the Adam and Eve kind of marriage, you know, makes marriage boring. To them? To them, you know? And the, a lot of things are not, are not dealt with. The sweetness of marriage is not being enjoyed, you know? People have come to make marriage. Oh, we're married because we're Christians. We're in this together yeah, for God. And God said, after Eve, he never gave any man a wife. He said, go look for a <laughs> wife for yourself. So true. Go look for a wife for yourself. Then that will lead us to the word romance. What is romance in marriage? The dictionary the meaning of romance simply says excitement. Mm, it's an excitement I love of love, that. the mystery that surrounds love. love. What makes love mysterious is romance that makes love mysterious. <laughs> it's, it's romance that makes, you know, romance, uh, love mysterious. mysterious. So the word excitement is what I want to pick on you now. What are those things? I mean, I mean, because you see, sometimes when people are talking about romance, they just believe what you need to say is L-O-V-E. I love you, I love you. And so when it is said, then we can all go home and we're good. Is that all what you know, love no, romance or romance is, is all that. about? Like I said initially, romance is what creates excitement, excitement in the marriage. The man comes from different angles, things you never expected. You know, a woman told me that one of the things that made her love her husband was the day her husband went to buy a motorbike. Okay. And she was expecting him, came back from the field. She was expecting him yeah. for the company car to drop, drop him as usual. Yes. But her husband came in all dressed like a superman Ooh. in a power bike and wow. was driving into the estate. estate. And people were even shouting. She didn't know it was her <laughs> husband. And when she came out, she saw that it was her own husband. husband. <laughs> that she was screaming, you know. I wish the videos with the cameras were there yeah. to watch it. That creates a lot of... Surprises, surprises, a lot of excitement, mm -hmm. you know, making you look forward to seeing your partner, partner every day because you don't know what he's going to come up with next. Good. Does excitement goes beyond just being very dramatic in that mm -hmm. aspect? What are those things significantly that are supposed to exude between a man and his wife? First and foremost, one of the things that creates top excitement in marriage is communication. I love that. I love that. I love that. Communication. The Communication. way a man communicates mm -hmm. to his woman. Good. You know, it makes people even around them value mm, the woman. The woman. That's it shows right. how much you value mm -hmm. your wife. That's right. Or how a woman communicates to her husband. Yes. It shows how much you value your, your husband. husband. That's right. Another thing that creates excitement in marriage is giving. That's right. I often say that the word hello vihi has hands, so it gives. <laughs> he doesn't just talk about, I love you, I love you, Toronto, but he says something nice <laughs> and he gives to the one he loves or she loves. And uh, I mean, it keeps things going. So, gift. It's many times uh, people tend to shy away from it because they believe it's, um, um, it has to do with finance sometimes. What do you have to say about this? Must you outgive yourself? And so, if you must give, how do you start by giving? There are so many ways to give. And I think for a lot of women, the greatest gifts you can give to a woman, the greatest form of giving, mm. is to give her your time. I love it. To give her your time. Yes. That's why you see a woman who drives a beautiful Jeep, stays in a state of art house, and yes, she says, I don't feel loved. No. Because what she wants is the time of the man, you know. 
she needs to be valued. That this is the woman you married, Marry. you know, to value me, to give me your time, time. to listen to me Good. when I have something to say. Even when it's stupid, Good. you listen to Just it listen. and make sense out of it. It is often said that women do not want to be right, but be heard. What's your take on this? Women, most times, there's a part of us that's very emotional. And we're not like men who keep everything inside, you know? A woman wants you to, 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 to identify with what with she's going feelings. on. The feelings inside of her. No matter how they feel like, no matter how they sound, the woman wants you to identify with her. So she wants you to listen. She wants you to contribute to what she's saying, you know? The child part of the woman comes like a child. The child wants you to give him or her attention. Mommy, this is what I'm saying. Daddy, this is what I'm saying. And when you don't listen, you are losing the person. Hmm. I think you need to repeat that. It's awesome. I love it. When you don't listen, you are losing, you are the, losing person. the person. Mm. The point comes where the person is not saying anything again. And you have lost the person. And it's a very long journey to go back to get the person back. to where you hmm. were. Awesome. Would that then mean, you know, because, okay. In the olden days, a, a man sits at home and um, the parents just go fetch him a wife. You know, not necessarily because um, they've had a relationship or they've gone through courtship. But they, they marry her anyhow. And surprisingly, they, they tend to live much longer now. In, in fact, marriage seems to be far enduring than what we now have, you know, in, the, in, in this modern day. Um, how were they able to bridge that? Because somebody would say, should we then go back to the olden days kind of marriage uh, instead of relying on what we have at the moment? What's, what's the bridge? What's the connection? I think one of the things that made marriages work, mm -hmm. even with the way they were fashioned in those days, were values. People just valued, you know, we value our family. family. My family name is at stake. Is at stake. This I must make it work me, regardless. Regardless mm -hmm. of whether they loved the man or the man didn't love them, yes. you know. I said, we're just like, we need to make it work. There was a lot of sacrifice. But people are beginning to get to a place that, oh, I can't make all the sacrifice, you know. My grandmother yes, used to say, should. why are young girls so excited to get married, running after, running all over the place? What are they looking for? Say, what is even in this marriage <laughs> apart from the children? And we used to laugh. We say, no, there's more to it. So for um, ah, the mindset is I get married to raise children. Mm. And that's why I'm here. So everything it takes to raise these children, to uh, make I sure I don't lose them, I don't lose out, I'll stay and do it. But with times, times are changing. People are beginning to express themselves. It's beyond the children. It's me and you. Companionship. Companionship, yes. you know. And the people are getting more aware. This is my place in the marriage. In the marriage yes. I'm not just there as a decoration. I have a place in this marriage. I have a stake. So I need to say something. I need to be heard too. All right. Beautiful. Talking about romance and marriage. All right. Um, you have women, most times, it's women that, that tend to um, feel uh, cheated in this part of uh, conversation we're having right now. Uh, and that has to do with the fact that they feel where the man wants her, so to say, in bed, and then the next thing he does is just to flip the zip open and that's it. And the woman says, wait a minute, I'm also a woman too, I'm a human being. Uh, can you not do, go, do better than just having a stretch jacket kind of love? What do you have to say concerning that? <laughs> Also what are the yes. background? Where is the man coming from? Yes. What are the things they saw? What does he know? You know, the, the, the background you come from, the home you come from. Mm. You never saw your father as a young boy cuddle your mother, say nice things to your mother. I love this. You know, all you, you, you don't even Mama know. Mama Margaret, come here. Where's Where, my food? Like uh, in the Niger Delta, <laughs> you know. The oh, you yeah, sleep there. Lie down. Lie down. <laughs> <laughs> the Roman will say, where are you? 
you know. Oh, my the God. German would just say, Ama, you know, and that is it. Yeah. He doesn't prepare Very dry. himself for the evening. Mm. As far as it's concerned, it's not important. And Does this have an effect, not just on the women aspect of things now, but even the children that are being raised? Of course. Does it affect them, seeing so that much. there is dryness between daddy and mom? So much. A young boy told me once, he said, my daddy loves my mommy. I said, how do you know your daddy loves your mommy? Mm. He said, this morning my daddy kissed my mommy. Wow. Mm. Isn't that awesome? I know he was very excited when he was telling me. Children want to know that you value their mother, especially sons, not even daughters. daughters. So if a father is a good example, the boy grows up to also you know, have a lot of romance around him because this is what he saw his father doing. doing. But if he comes from a background where everything is shrouded, <laughs> the parents behave <laughs> like Saint Angel Gabriel <laughs> and uh, Mary. The parents behaving like uh, Saint Angels and so on and so forth. You know? Should, on Mama Helen and you in a moment, we're going to be looking at, should your calling to the state, how far you go? regarding your marriage and can you also still be romantic regardless of your calling back in a moment it is still mama Ellen and you. Praise 
description so marvelous for words God be praised yeah. God be praised Welcome back. That was awesome, beautiful dedication. I've enjoyed myself. So kudos to you, young man. Anyway, it is still Mama Helen and you all the way from Wari, Nigeria. And yes, we have been talking about relationship regarding husband and wife, and then the romance aspect of it. Now, can a man's calling? determines how far he goes with his wife regarding romance. I don't think so. A man <laughs> is a man. Anyway. Anyway, anytime. Uh -huh. And a wife, a woman, is a woman. It's the same needs that a woman who is on the pew has and a woman who is a clergy. That's the truth. So even if you're a bishop, whatever you are, the more you, it, it, it gives you the opportunity to express love to your wife so that you're teaching younger men, <laughs> you are showing them what is right. Romance is not vulgar. Between a married Man couple. And, yes, a married couple. Yes. It's never it's vulgar. Never, it's never. It's when it's not in marriage, mm -hmm. then it becomes vulgar. vulgar. That's right. The Bible said they were both naked and they were not Ashamed. Awesome, 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 awesome. Some men have read the whole of the Bible, <laughs> but they've never read the songs of Solomon. Mm -hmm. Which is Tell an me awesome about some expression <laughs> of love. This was Bishop Solomon speaking here. Exactly. Talking about his beauty. Some men are so shy to even call their wife Oni, <laughs> sweetheart, sugar, and said, Mama, Mama Bomboy. Mama Bomboy. <laughs> Mama Mary, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't oh add up. There's no limit to which you can express love to your wife. As long as you're not... And when we talk of romance, we're not talking of kissing and uh, cuddling in public. That's not the mm -hmm. only way. There's so this many ways. Yes. A man walks quietly to his wife, removes dirt from her hair, in yes. presence, whether you're a bitch. Some people will just leave it and say we're in public. Let her carry it and be walking about <laughs> until we get home. We're in public. I mean, I feel it's hypocrisy. It is. Because you get into the room and you want to do all kinds of drama. And then when you are outside, you're behaving very angelic. You keep your distance as if you came from two different homes. So we are, we're in public now, so just behave yourself, comport yourself. And that's bringing, and that's that brought a lot of distraction into the life of Christian men. Because the excitement that they ought to have from their wives, they don't get it. And God forbid, the devil sneaks in. They see a young girl outside, show them that excitement. A lot of them get thrown off balance. And it becomes a huge problem in the family. And we begin to talk of deliverance issues. Sometimes it's just this little thing. If you let everybody know you love your wife, a young girl who likes you will think twice. How would you look at this? Um, it's the mode of communication part of romance. You know, I mean, I've seen where a young lady says, oh, he talks down on me. You know, there's a difference between talking with someone and talking to someone when the husband and wife talk to most, most importantly the man talks to the wife does that not kill romance it does totally no woman wants to come back home and argue and kiss you when you have talked down on her uh -huh. in the public i mean you have injured her ego you know and you just get back home and the same woman you have told somebody told me that the husband told her, shut up in presence of all his siblings, and they were all younger than her. Then he came home to beg her. <laughs> then she said, no, we have to go back to your family. <laughs> you have to beg and get in front of your siblings. <laughs> Let them know that you value me. Value me. me. Is there any other thing short of that? We cannot it's resolve It's not genuine. It's a, it's a huge problem. 
when you talk down on your wife, wife. or as a in woman, public, you talk down or on your husband. Even in, pre in the presence of, of your children. Yeah. Because then you're not teaching the children, isn't it? No, you're when, not when teaching you talk them. When you talk down on your wife in the presence of, um, of your children, it's what, what, kind, what, kind of, what kind of message are you, are you sending out to those children? Because children don't learn by instruction, often time, until they get to a certain age. Children learn by example. What they see. That's why we emphasize doing in learning. Children learn by example. And these things become innate. That's why we as young women, we tell you, I won't, I won't talk like my mother. But you end up talking exactly, exactly like, your, like mom. your mom. You end up doing everything that your mom does because you watch her every day and it becomes innate. It becomes part of you. So it's a very, very wrong thing to talk down on your wife, abuse your wife in presence of your children. It is bad abusing your, your wife in the presence of your children. It is important that you talk politely. That's what we've heard from our guests. I know that women also have a part of playing in this because the you know, focus has been on what men ought to do. What do women want in marriage? There are three basic things, fundamental things, that women want in marriage. They need to be loved. They need to be valued. They need for security all forms of security. That's why you see a woman, you say, oh, you have this, you have that. You say, but I don't feel secured in this, in this marriage. home. When a man is going to buy a land and he goes with his brother, his brother is his next of kin. The woman's sense of security is threatened. A sense of worth and value is threatened. You know, she's the last person to know what the man is doing. And in conflict prevention, one of the dif most difficult conflicts to resolve is value-based conflict. So true. So true. If it's a, if it's a, a, a resource-based conflict, you can decide to say, you have this, you have this. That's it's it. resolved. But when I don't feel valued, valued, when I feel that you are dehumanizing me, you don't see me as somebody, it becomes, it becomes very deep. It takes so much time for that pain to heal, to heal and for there to be transformation. Then a woman needs to be loved. She needs to be reassured. Some men will say, if I didn't love you, why did I marry you? <laughs> One woman told her husband, say in the process of time, from point A to point B, a lot of things happen. So at every point, I need you to reassure me that something different has not happened. That is the same love you profess to me on the day of marriage that we are still working on. Just in case you have divided the love, I don't know. So I need to know. Well, it's been the women's turn on along, but now it's going to be for our men folks, because I can imagine somebody itching out there. What about us? Shouldn't they also show us romance as well? And the question here is, that we'll be addressing in a little while, should you engage in bargaining ship just to get romance from your husband back in a moment oh, mama. Uh, God started marriage in of Eden and the Bible says in the cool of Eden time to time God used to come down to our fellow I see that as one of the things is value value, you know. One of the things I enjoy in my marriage is that my husband can call me 20 times in a day. If he's going from NRA Junction, if he's coming from the house to the church, he's coming. he can call you when he gets to NRA Junction. I just got to NRA yeah, Junction. Yeah. <laughs> Mama, hell in you. Mama, hell in you.